Kevin Arm, Black Hawks Director of New Media and Creative Services. So I oversee social media for the Hawks. If you've ever wondered who the idiots are tweeting for the Black Hawks, <laughs> that's me and our uh, New Media Coordinator, Brad Boron, who also not only does a great job on Twitter, but single-handedly runs our Facebook page. So um, you can follow us there if you're not already at uh, Facebook slash NHL Black Hawks. Quick bit of housekeeping before we introduce the guys. Of course, I know you've heard it all weekend, but I want to mention that, of course, we're going to uh, avoid any talk of the labor situation as it's going on this weekend, try not to put the guys in a position where they have to comment on that, certainly as we get to the Q&A, so uh, we respect uh, everyone respecting that. Um, I do want to ask real quick, um, I assume you're here because, I don't know, you just love these guys, maybe you have some interest in social media. Um, how many people, show of hands, keep your hands up, are following at NHL Black Box on Twitter? All right, that's impressive. Keep your hands up, real quick. So. If you're following us on Facebook as well, you like us on Facebook, keep your hands up or take them down if you're not. Okay, still mostly up. What about on Pinterest? Oh. <laughs> I see some hands. All right, I love it. And they're almost all female. Not <laughs> Thank you. Okay, keep them up. Instagram. Look at that. Fantastic. I definitely think. Uh, the hands we're seeing there for Instagram and for Pinterest, those are going to be up a lot next year uh, as we hopefully will leave this panel again. So thank you everyone for uh, participating in that and following us on social media. Uh, and speaking of following us, actually we're streaming this panel live right now on ChicagoBlackHawks.com. So everyone who's not here but hopefully wants to follow along, uh, we do have a custom hashtag. It's BHC Tweet. So if you want to have any Fun remarks, want to make any comments on this panel as it's going on, use the hashtag BHC tweet, just make sure they're all positive about me. <laughs> um, so use that hashtag and also we'll be not only taking questions from the crowd, but we will be taking questions from the crowd and from people watching on ChicagoBlackHawks.com using that hashtag. So if you have a question for the panelists, use that hashtag BHC tweet. Okay, I think we've got all that out of the way. Let's go ahead and start introducing our esteemed panel. We start with a guy who was a sensation on the ice and a social media sensation off the ice, Andrew Shaw. valuable Blackhawks tweeter. He is at Bowling87, Brandon Bowling. Brandon, next up is, I guess I don't know what to call him other than the comedian of Blackhawks tweeters. Oh, he's, he's prepping himself for something down the road, I guess. It is Jimmy Hayes. Bix 29, Brian Bickle. <laughs> so as we as we get settled here, I, I was thinking about how we would kind of arrange you guys, and as it turns out, it was, it was random. The order was handed to me, but I thought we could almost put you in order of your Twitter followers, whoever has the most. how that ranking goes and how many followers you have. And I, I can tell that Andrew, you are very aware. So let's kind of go down the road. How much do you pay attention to that number as it goes up or down? Probably not, but as that number goes up, and are you competing with your fellow teammates on Twitter? Yeah, you know, uh, we compete, uh, we like to compare numbers, I guess. But, uh, I've had it a little bit longer than that. And, you know, the whole shot pack thing helped me a lot. <laughs> We'll definitely get to that, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at mine and see who follows me and, and check out uh, if there are uh, any celebrities. Or I usually look at all the fans and see what their see what their responses are and stuff. It's it's cool to follow. 
I'm actually uh, currently looking at my phone, making sure my followers are going up. Shot me with a shot back stuff. Don't believe me. Yeah, I'm always looking. At it. Yeah, literally always looking. At it. Um, I noticed I, I room with Bullock on the, on the road, and uh, he's looking at it every minute. Like, it's crazy. He's got like a couple batteries just to keep his phone alive. And, uh, I, I look at mine and. Uh, I was nearing him, now he's past me because he's always on and tweeting and he's getting all these followers. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see the fans to, to follow me and uh, I enjoy your comments and uh, hopefully you guys keep it up. Well, as it turns out, and it truly was random, but they are in order of about 23,000 as of yesterday. <laughs> 16,600, Jimmy Hayes 15,5, Brian Bickle 14,2, but he is the new guy. He is the new guy. Seniority is the other way we could have certainly ranked them. And uh, Jimmy Hayes, actually, you go back the, the furthest, April 2011. And Andrew Shaw, you also, a little bit after that, I think, April 2011. Bullock, November 2011. And Bickle, you were just not too long ago, March 30th, 2012. So, <laughs> so I actually want to show a couple of tweets. I want to get into how you guys got started on Twitter. Let's start with the first tweet. Let's put it up here on the board. It should be Brian Bickle. Shoot. <laughs> I can't <laughs> Stepping up in the world, finally got Twitter. Do you think it was a good idea? So that was yours. Let's go to Andrew Shaw, your first tweet next. <laughs> I'll go back to Shaw. There we go. Gave in, finally got the Twitter. So I just want to ask you guys, I want to go down the road here and go back to that first tweet. Do you remember what you said at all? What prompted you to get on Twitter? Why did you finally take the lead? I don't, I don't remember tweeting that, um, it was so long ago, but, uh, you know, I was playing junior back in, uh, Canada, and my whole team got it, and I think I was the last one, you know, they kept trying to peer pressure me to get it, and, you know, I think it was the end of the year I finally gave in. Brent? Actually, we were on, uh, we were on a road trip when, uh, when I was still in Rockford, and a bunch of us were just sitting there, and, and somebody said we should get it, I, I used to be against it, I thought it was kind of corny, but, but now it's pretty fun, and it's, uh, it's a lot more fun when you get more followers, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, I got mine when I was in college, which is uh, my picture of my best buddy in college there. So, uh, I don't know, I think everyone had one, and then I just like, uh, like, or I was never going to get one, I just gave in, and uh, I love that thing now. <laughs> right? Yeah, all these guys uh, got me into it. And, um, they were like, get Twitter, get Twitter, you're so funny, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, um, so, funny looking, by the way. Oh. But uh, yeah, these guys talk me into doing it, and uh, I've been enjoying it. And it's, it's nice to see what you guys have to say and what's out there in the tour world. It's nice. And... Well, peer pressure, you heard it there, obviously, is a big component of that. But just talk about that a little bit further. In particular, for the guys who started the year in Rockford, there was a real push in Rockford to see everybody was getting on, and, and if you weren't, you were definitely making fun of the guys, including Jeremy Morin for a long time, wasn't on Twitter, Twitter and that became its own little meme, he was Twitterless Mo. So he eventually got on, they of course, Jeremy Morin on. So just kind of talk about that, uh, really kind of urging your other teammates. Once you did it, you were kind of maybe forcing other guys. I think they were just nervous, you know, um, you know we're already up in thousands of followers, and, you know, they got to start off at zero, it's, uh, it's kind of embarrassing, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, we give them a few shout outs, give them a little help, and uh, they caught right up to us. Well, I think the more buddies you have on them, the better. And usually our tweets aren't too serious. You have the odd one that's serious. But uh, I, think, I think the best part about it is making fun of your, making fun of your teammates a little bit and, and seeing how the fans react to that. Well, we're definitely going to get to some of the making fun of your teammates here in a, in a moment. I, I want to get a bigger picture with Twitter, though. Ask all four of you, what was, other than the peer pressure, what was the main reason to get on it? Was it something where you, you felt like you needed an outlet to express yourself? You wanted to help kind of brand yourself and make sure fans knew who you were a little bit? What what was really the driving force behind it? Um, start down at Brian. Yeah, I'll start. Um, <laughs> just to, to show the fans what we do on a regular basis on like on road trips or like for me, you can see the pictures that I do in the summertime. I do a lot of fishing and um, hopefully you guys like the, the fish that we're catching, but um, you know what? Uh, just to follow different things, like if you follow the weather, the sports, it's just it's 
quick access to, to get information on your phone and when you need it. And um, it's nice to see you guys. Uh, what you guys need to talk about when you are uh, about to, about me and uh, things like that. Jimmy. Um, yeah, I mean, I like to use it as uh, my stand-up comedy. But, <laughs> uh, but it, like Big said, it's kind of awesome. You people tweet different things. You can follow whatever you want. And, it's a great way to stay involved with everybody and kind of communicate that way. But, um, I mean, I try to use it now and just try to be funny, but other than that, it's, um, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm trying to be funny, that's right. <laughs> Brandon, what do you think about it? I mean, I, I think it's just the fan interaction. There's, there's no better way to, to communicate with your fans and, and uh, the Blackhawks fans to, uh, other than that, you know, some guys, not many guys have Facebook anymore. And I think Twitter's kind of taken off. It has taken off, and it's, it's a great way to, to talk to people, see what they have to say. Sometimes it's funny to see when they rip on you a little bit. Like, I think people make fun of my skating all the time. It's not, it's not very nice, but it's, it's, it's great to see what people have to say. You know, Brandon mentioned Facebook. <laughs> Obviously, there are lots of options for social media engagement with fans, but you guys really have seen you gravitated towards Twitter. What is it about Twitter? Is it largely just the, the ease of it? Yeah, you know, it's the new thing. Um, you know, it's just pretty easy to follow someone, and uh, you know, tweets aren't long, so uh, you know, I'll be reading a novel like you do on Facebook. And, you, know, you know, it's it's just like a great way to uh, keep contact with friends back home, or you know, uh, give you guys a little behind the scenes action. You know, it's it's, it's fun. Brandon, what about you in terms of the, the ease of Twitter? Is that something that attracts you to it? Yeah, it's very easy. Obviously, you got it right to your phone, and, and that's pretty much what you use. And, and like he said, it's a good way to keep in contact with people. And, and I think Pickle mentioned it, just follow some random stuff, like sports teams or, or weather or whatever you want, and even news, news channels or whatever. It's, it's a good way to, to see what's going on in the world. Let's go down to Brian on this one and get all your thoughts. How much? is replying important to you? Not just tweeting things out to fans, but actually you replying to what fans are asking or saying to you. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, the fans appreciate that. Um, a lot of people always say, oh, it's my birthday, it's my birthday. And I always give wish them a happy birthday. Or um, For a lot of people have been tweeting about uh, pit bulls because I did a, uh, a fundraiser here last year about pit bulls and uh, about the dogs. And um, just to get back to the people who are, that tweet me, it's, uh, it's important, it's just uh, the communication you have, and uh, people really appreciate it. Jenny? Yeah, I mean, uh, with these new jokes, everybody keeps asking me to tweet a joke at them, but I gotta tell them I only have so many jokes. And I can't <laughs> it. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool that people tweet at you, and uh, you respond and everything, so it's, it's like Big said, it's kind of great to uh, be able to interact with everybody at the same time, and uh, have some fun with it as well. Brandon, how much do you interact with fans? I mean, like I said, I like, I like seeing what, what people have to say. And, and like, I think Big Smash you know, people say, you know, it's my birthday, can you get a shout out and all that stuff. And it's cool to see what people say. And when you, when you do it, it's funny to see the reaction and see how, see how excited they get. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I wrote, yeah, it's my birthday, can you get a retweet? Or, you know, it's all that stuff. It's, it's nice to see, uh, you know, feedback from, you know, the fans. It's just such a great support here from from all you guys here in Chicago, and well, you know, it's it's tough. You get a lot of tweets. It's hard to read them all, but uh, we we scan through them and we read most of them. Well, you mentioned birthdays. You had a birthday Friday, right? Yeah. Did you hear about it a lot from Twitter? Oh yeah, my phone blew up pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna feel good though. Yeah, it does. It feels good. Uh, I appreciate it, guys. Well, I mentioned that we were gonna get into 